Um, well, I think there's a general, you know, sense of, um, I don't know, the sport really like shifting. Um, when I first got onto the team in 2005, we were barely getting four or 5,000 people there. Um, and it, it's come in a few waves, you know, obviously when the women on the team won the World Cup in 1999, it was huge. And then they had a league that crashed, and so we've been trying to kind of find, um, you know, this this big thing again with this team. And I think we're here now, you know. I think ever since the 2011 World Cup, we've captivated, you know, the nation and the world, and um, we just continue to be successful, be great role models. And I feel like our our team right now is is kind of the women's premier team you know everybody loves watching us play um, they support us they rally with us and we're drawing a great fan base and a great crowd um, yes and no I mean I you know I didn't want my book to be you know a book that's just throwing people under the bus it's not not like that um, I just wanted to, it to be, you know, genuine and true and from the heart, and I'm, I'm proud to say that, you know, it, it is all of that. Um, it takes readers through, you know, behind the scenes journey of my first time on the national team, behind the scenes, my training, um, rift with my family, really just kind of everything, um, more than just a one-off interview gives you. And so when I was writing this about certain things with the team, um, when I first got on, no, I wasn't, I wasn't worried at all because I, I, I don't hold any hard feelings towards any player, former player that I played with. You know, everyone was competitive. I was immature. Um, all, all of those things just made me stronger. And I think people didn't quite get my personality when I first came onto the team. And now I think they do, and I think they respect it. Um, but it's, uh, you know, the journey has made, made me strong and um, it's been an honor to play with some of these amazing former players. Mm. Um, I mean, it's hard because even though I've sacrificed so much, it's worth it. You know, it's worth it to be having a gold medal put around my neck and holding up a World Cup trophy. Um, but I, I would say that the, the hardest things are, you know, the sentimental things, missing out on, on weddings, close family and friends. Um, you know, I would definitely say, obviously, funerals, you know, not being there for, for that type of stuff. Um, and obviously, Brian has had to take, you know, a huge backseat through all of this and knows that this is my number one priority. So, you know, we've obviously may have missed out on being able to just, you know, go away and enjoy life and vacation, but I've been so driven and, and obviously he's been driven with his career as well. Um, but when you look back at it, it, I mean, it's, it's all worth it and I'm not going to do this forever. So it's been, it's been great. Um, you know, I think this, this book is, is really a book that anyone can pick up. I didn't want to write a book for just soccer fans or sports people. Um, you know, while soccer is kind of the number one focus and it's a large part of my journey, there's a lot of other obstacles that I've had to overcome. Um, you know, not speaking to my family for eight years, not having them a part of many things in my life, uh, you know, just overcoming so many obstacles. And really, you know, the book is, in, is inspiring for many people that have aspirations of becoming great when a lot of people doubt them, may not think that they can be great, uh, no matter what's thrown at you, no matter what has come your way, if you just put your mind to it and you work extremely hard every single day when nobody was watching, um, you can be great. And that's, that's my story in a nutshell. You know, someone who wasn't the next big thing that everybody was talking about someone that no one thought could go on to become the best player in the world except for James, my trainer, and eventually myself. Well, I think anything worthwhile in life is never easy. And I have such an appreciation for everything that's come my way. Um, I had to wait a really long time for all of this to 
come um, to my life off the field endorsements a book um, it took 13 years you know for for people to really realize my story and what I've been doing all these years and um, it was hard going about it that way but I never took any shortcuts nothing was ever handed to me and I think if it were handed to me I don't know that I would have broken so many barriers if it were easy I don't know that I would still be climbing to the top and trying to separate myself from everybody else I think you look at every success story a professional athlete or politician or um, you know Steve Jobs um, CEOs they didn't have an easy road to the top but I think that's why they're successful because nothing was handed to them and they've had to work extremely hard to to get to that point yeah I think at the end of the day winning is obviously a huge part of my life um, it doesn't feel good to lose at all but it happens and it's sport and it's life and I think you w you you learn more from your losses than you do from your success and wins but I think I'm just I don't know I'm, I'm just proud of kind of who I've remained throughout all this and I haven't changed as a person um, you know I'm still this scrappy player that grew up in a really small town and dating my soon to be married to my my high school sweetheart and still have the same circle of friends and close support system um, I'm still me and you know I don't have to all of a sudden switch hats and walk out of my house and turn the role model hat on um, it's just me and you know I just go out there and work as hard as I can to be the best that I can and uh, I've learned a lot of valuable lessons along the way and I hope that I can instill that in uh, the future when, you know, Brian and I want to have kids.